I'm James Vocal. I'm the curator of the Alchemical Quest. The Alchemical Quest is an exhibit here at the Chemical Heritage Foundation, which is meant to showcase some of our rare book collection, and at the same time, exhibit some of the new scholarship on alchemy that has uh, come about in recent time. One of the major thrusts of the exhibit is that alchemy and chemistry in the period that we're talking about, which is the 16th and 17th centuries, uh, were basically synonymous terms. The idea of alchemy as referring solely to transmutational alchemy is an idea that only comes along later. So for all the books in this exhibit, the authors were using the two terms basically interchangeably. One of the ways in which we're demystifying alchemy is by showing how alchemy was involved in all kinds of different areas of human industry. So each one of these cases uh, exhibits books showing how alchemy is used and has, and has a productive purpose in society. This is what we call the introductory wall of the exhibit. It situates uh, alchemy and gets the, the visitor ready for the different uh, cases out in the main room. Uh, and it starts with this question of what's in a name, talking about where the terms alchemy and chemistry come from, and this mass of language that describes the different areas of alchemy that are shown in the exhibit. So we have chemiatria, which refers to chemical medicine, there's metallurgy, there's distilling, and there's prizopoeia, or the great work, which refer to gold making. And you'll notice that the designer has used, uh, for the most part, black, but also these nice metallic gold letterings to evoke that, that gold making part of the enterprise. Uh, we also have here four sort of representative books. They're smallish books, but there's a book of medicine, a book of metallurgy, one of distilling, and one of alchemical theory. A 15-foot tall blow-up of an allegorical image of two figures atop a mountain takes up the back wall of the space. The low ceiling in the front of the room conceals the figures until the visitor approaches, giving a sense of motion and achievement in their quest. Towns and ships at sea in the background remind us of the role of alchemy in human industry. Because we're interested in demystifying alchemy, we wanted to have the space simple and clear. No walls or vertical elements obscure the view across the entire space. The five freestanding exhibit cases evoke the laboratory bench with many books laid open as though for reference. Others are mounted on stems like birds in flight, creating visual interest. The exhibit text is flat on the table height surface, drawing the viewer in and establishing an intimacy. For each one of the five cases, the design elements are basically the same. Graphic elements from alchemical books are used in the exhibit design, situating the books within a particular context provided from contemporary sources. There is both a broad, fainter background image and a sharper, dark inset image. In the chemical medicine case, a physician with patient provides the contextual background, while a patient vomiting after taking the purgative antimony is inset. The metallurgy books are some of the most spectacular in the exhibit, so we move them further into the room so they don't overwhelm the visitor at the beginning. And what we're showing in the metallurgy cases is the important role that alchemy played in the mining enterprise. Miners descending underground are the context for the case, with a parallel image showing metals being formed underground from the fumes of mercury and sulfur inset. Although we're anxious to show the place of alchemy in everyday life, we can't really avoid the problem of transmutation. And so we address the problem of transmutation here in the Chrysopoeia case. The exhibit discusses that there was a theoretical framework within which transmutation was sensible, and the sophistication of alchemists' chemical practice is illustrated through the discussion of their synthesis of dragon's blood, the volatilization of gold to gold chloride in a chlorine gas environment that was not published in the chemical literature until 1890. This discussion takes place in the context of decoding one of alchemy's rich allegorical images, a rooster eating a fox, which is eating a rooster in turn, from the keys of Basil Valentine. It thus demystifies simultaneously on two fronts. In this final case, we showcase the involvement of some of the great luminaries of 17th century science, Isaac Newton and Robert Boyle, with alchemy. On the one hand, this maintains themes from the rest of the exhibit. Given the central importance of alchemy and the investigation of the ultimate constituents of matter, it is not at all surprising that leading natural philosophers were drawn to it. And they were as involved with the quest for transmutation as any other alchemists, 
as the Newton manuscript containing two stages in the making of the Philosopher's Stone shows. On the other hand, this section points the way toward alchemy's future. The last object is the third edition of Newton's optics open to the 31st query, in which Newton asks whether forces acting between minute particles of matter may not explain a great part of the chemical phenomena of nature. And that really shows where chemistry grows out of alchemy in the 18th century. One of the limitations of a book exhibit is the books have to be left open to a single page, and of course they can't be handled by the visitor. The exhibit includes a digital interactive in the form of a monkey book, a virtual book. It allows the visitor the experience of turning the pages and viewing additional material with no danger to the artifacts. It also allowed for the inclusion of additional interpretive material that did not find its way into the physical exhibit. So for the interactive, we took two of the books in the exhibit, uh, Pandora from 1582 and Barchusen's Elementa Chimia from 1718. In Pandora, a selection of allegorical woodcuts have virtual translations from the German, explanations of elements within the images, and playful animations of elements within the illustration. The digital interactive using the monkey book is a first for a rare book exhibit in the United States and possibly in the world using this technology. And by the inclusion of animation and additional interpretive information, the book literally comes alive for the visitor, leading some of our youngest visitors to dub it the magic book. If you'd like to learn more, come visit us in Philadelphia at the Chemical Heritage Foundation or online at chemheritage.org. Thanks for watching. I'm James Wilkins.